Okay. I'm going to show you what we do to get these rods ready to cut the caps. Cut the caps and the rods. Uh, we got to deburr some stuff on it. So basically, we just get this surface, this surface, and this surface. I don't like to put a big, a big chamfer right here. That's uh, counterproductive to measuring the rod correctly. I just want to break the edge. After we hone the rod, we come back in and hit that with sandpaper so the bearing will slide right in there without making metal. After we do this, we're going to go over and clean the clean the rod bolt holes out of these rods, and we're going to install the rod bolts. I'm just trying to get any any raised surfaces gone before we put these caps in the cap cutter to cut them. Like that one had this one had a raised up edge right here. There's some stuff there. Of course it'd be the last one. Okay, this is uh, the cap cutter, and what we use this for is to cut this surface on the rod in the cap. And this thing, it's important that this fence is 90 degrees to the stone, which is right here. Okay, a lot of times I've found like when remanufactured rods come in here, this surface will be uneven when we go to cut it. And this machine's dialed in with this horseshoe. We can get into this later if anybody's interested in how to dial this thing in to where it cuts 90 degrees in every direction. But uh, this is the tool that you use to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna dress a stone with this diamond before we do anything. when I'm cutting these rods but I'm not gonna so you can hear what's going on okay we're gonna take the tang tang side and we're gonna put it to our face we're gonna clamp it in the cap cutter like that we're gonna lower the stone we're gonna bring it up till it makes contact with the rod It's just starting to make contact there. So I'm going to make a quick cut like that to see how flat this is. It's not perfectly flat from the factory. Can you see that, Tommy? But it's not bad. We're going to clamp it back in here. Make another cut. We're going to move at 1,000. Another half. 
So we've taken basically a thou and a half off the bottom of that rod. Now it's flat. It's 90 degrees to this face. We'll do a couple of them here. Show you again. I'm going to lower the stone where it just touches. Again, it's not cutting flat. Go with thou. And another half. And you can see it didn't it didn't clean up all the way there. So we're gonna set that one to the side and we'll come back to it. A half a thousand. Just touch him. One thousand. Half a Okay, now we're going to cut the caps. We're going to have the bearing tang towards us. We're going to take about two thousandths off the rod caps. Now you can see this one didn't clean up right here. You can see right there or didn't clean. So we'll come back to that. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to take the shortest amount off these rods so we don't lose any length on our rods. Okay that one that one came in good. But we don't want to have to cut more off. This one didn't clean up over here, so it'll go in that pile. I can tell from the way this one sounds, this is a factory screw up. They didn't get the cap cut right from the factory. So we're going to have to really watch this when we resize it. But we'll get into how we do that when we resize it. See how this one sounds? This one's cutting just how it should. It's a little light there, so we'll come back and get it. You just don't want to have to take more off them than you need to. Like I said, it'll it'll shorten your rod. That one cleaned up nicely. We need to you can get a lot of labor in these rods. The problem is, 
you buy a cheaper a cheaper aftermarket rod, you're going to be redoing all this anyway if you want it right. This one's got a problem. We've got it cleaned up. So we've got this issue on this one to deal with. Got it. Okay, we're gonna come back to the rod. Didn't want to clean up with the minimal cut. We're gonna re-chamfer it. cleaned right up. This one's barely missing an edge out here. Another thing too I want to mention, when you're building a flat tappet motor, you don't want to grind these off. That would sling oil up onto the camshaft. I believe that that's what it's for. Okay, we got our caps cut. So now what we'll do is we'll blow out the rods and the caps and we'll put the rod bolts in. Okay, so we're ready to put our rod bolts in and we're going to demonstrate that. But first I want to show you. Can you get that, Tommy? This right here. We've hit this with some sandpaper before we put the rod bolts in to get this edge knocked off. So we'll now slide that bearing in there. It'll go in there real nice. Now, when we resize it, it might screw it up again, but you know we can dress it again. But that's kind of important because you don't want the bearing making metal on the back side of the bearing when it goes into the rod. So we're going to demonstrate how to put these in. Second one. Okay, we got our rod bolts in and we're getting ready to put the rod nuts on. I always use the ARP lube and I'll show you how I lube them. It's kind of important because you want you want them to repeat. If you take this take this thing and torque it up and size it, you want it to to repeat when you separate it and put it back together and I found that if you do the lube the same way every time, that seems to help. So what I'll do is I'll take the rod nuts and I'll, I'll rub them together like this with lube to get it, get it on the shoulder of the bolt here and then it gets in the thread. I've already got lube on the thread on both sides here. That, that's how I do it. It seems to repeat real well when you do it that way. Okay, we torqued the rod nuts to 
55 pounds with ARP lube. I like to loosen them and retorque them a second time. I'm not sure what that does, but ARP recommends that you do it. Okay, from here, we're going to dress the sides of the rods. We're going to flapper wheel these small ends so there's no burrs when we go to press the piston pins in. And then we're going to hone them, 